Hey YouTube, this is Zach with the Gillies Financial, and today I want to talk about, in particular, Bank of America stock, but really the banking industry as a whole, as next week we start the next round of earnings and the banks that like to start us off. Right now we're anticipating having earnings next week on October 14th, and this is just a high-level summary of what we'll be expecting. I want to highlight that this is a pretty substantial difference between what we saw in last year versus today. You can see that we've got 47 cents on the estimate compared to last year. The estimate was actually 51 cents. But the big difference here is that the low interest rate environment combined with the potential for high losses on the loans is causing this disparity where we could have a really low quarter or we could have a really high quarter here depending on trading volume. Bank of America in particular has a lot of active trading capabilities and this is probably going to see a top of the line year over year increase like we saw in Q2. So there's a lot of moves here and a lot of potential. The key thing here is do we want to buy, do we want to have calls? or is this going to trade sideways? If we look at what we've seen over the course of the past week, you can already see that we've had quite the spike come up and this is just over the past 10 days. What we saw yesterday for the broader market, which if you saw the video yesterday, we talked about the fact that everything you see right here was just a panic button hit sell. And the market rebounded nicely today with banks largely leading. A lot of this run up that you saw over the past 10 days is coming from the idea that there will be additional stimulus measures, which as additional stimulus measures come about, you're obviously going to see less loan defaults, which means more profitability. And that can be seen here in the stock price. However, when it comes to the bank stocks, year to date, these have been some pretty significant underperformers. And you can see that represented here by the fact that year to date, Bank of America is still down pretty significantly. The good news is this has made them a very attractive dividend play with about a 3% dividend yield at this point in time. That is one of the reasons why I like to buy Bank of America around this price is that they do have an attractive dividend yield. I do prefer it to be closer to that 3% mark and I'm a little bit under that on my personal holdings. I will highlight that I have not purchased any Bank of America in the past six months at this point or five months. And the reason for that is because the financials with the low interest rate environment is just not super attractive in the immediate term. And I, this is something that I'd like to phase in maybe at a lower price, but it's just not a personal priority of mine, but it is still a large holding for me. And I do like it because it does have that capability to essentially, I can buy 100 shares and we can earn $72 a year at the current price. Again, that is just a high level overview, but it's something that is pretty good for a company that's really not going anywhere. The financial industry is one that is here to stay. Although I will say that I'm concerned if there is a flip in the house or in the Senate, in terms of the White House, then I do know that the left is traditionally not favorable to the larger financial institutions. So that is a risk to note associated with Bank of America. As far as the earnings plays go, one of the items that I would highlight is that we do have a lot of fundamental analysis that can support why Bank of America is in a good spot. One of the items that I would highlight would be their cash balance. There are a lot of loans and banks are interesting because loans are assets and you can see that represented here. Again, we've got a lot of assets in terms of the gross loans and this is again in the millions. So they have a lot, a lot of loans, nearly a trillion in loans. And this is all going to be used to be making them more money. One of the other items that I would highlight, though, is the fact that they still owe on those loans and on any or rather they own on any cash associated with that. And you can see that here in terms of the deposits right at one point four billion. And this is a number that is going up. Sorry, one point seven billion. And this is a number that you can see has risen pretty dramatically 
as people begin saving more money, as businesses save more money, they don't want to go out and spend that. So to put that in perspective, because I did mention that up here under the assets, the total gross loans, it is actually cl right at a trillion compared to the potential for down below of a 1.7 billion on the deposit side. The good news is what all of this says is that they are very well capitalized, which tends to lend itself well to less regulatory scrutiny. And they do have cash on hand, which does imply that they do have the capability to begin stock buybacks, which was the great thing about the stocks going forward. I do think that in the at the end of Q4, right before the end of Q4, it might be a good time to invest in them because it will enable the banks to begin buybacks again. And you can see that here that they are cash flow positive. And despite the fact we see a huge drop in Q1 and Q2 of this year, that's really that loan loss provision. And you can see those two numbers here where the actual total story is that they're bringing in a lot of cash, but they're just socking it away in case of loan losses. So where does that put them in terms of the market float or just compared to their peers? You can see that Bank of America across the board is pretty regular in terms of their industry average. I will say that the peg ratio, they're a lot higher. However, this is in the banking industry and generally our mega banks are doing a lot more than just banking. So they do at trade at a higher peg ratio. So one of the other items I want to do is just this peer comparison, because when we talk about financial institutions, all of these institutions, aside from potentially USB, are going to be announcing earnings next week. And I really like Bank of America. I really like JP Morgan, but I do not like Wells Fargo and I do not like Citigroup. And you can see that some of that is even reflected in the analyst ratings that you see across the board right here, or rather the 52 week change. Wells Fargo is a company that's been continuously hit by scandals, and I just don't like them. They still have an asset cap, which I think is going to prevent them from aggressively growing, where Bank of America and JP Morgan are just completely dominant in their industry, particularly since the last financial recession. The other item I would highlight is from a dividend yield perspective. As you can see, Bank of America and JP Morgan have very attractive yields at 3% and 3.7% approximately. And then you can even see that Citigroup also has a very attractive dividend yield, as does USB. However, when we're looking at the companies as a, as a comparison factor, I would highlight that the, the total revenue is pretty significantly different between these four and USB. And that's because these are really the mega banks in the United States. Revenue wise, they're all doing pretty well, but look at the difference in profit between everyone and Wells Fargo. And this is pretty dramatic when we're looking at these numbers. I do also like the earnings growth that you can see here. And just by looking at these numbers, you can tell that Bank of America is heavily focused on increasing earnings and growing that revenue. So I think that there's a lot of advantages here to be investing in Bank of America. I think that in a stock market where there are a lot of hot stocks, that Bank of America is a good position to hold. Particularly, this is, from a share perspective, the largest holding in Warren Buffett's portfolio and the second largest behind Apple in terms of volume. Again, this is a good dividend, it's a safe financial institution, and there's a lot going for it, and I think we're on the lower end of the risk side. Personally, for earnings, I do anticipate that I am going to be playing a little bit closer and not be making a big play. I have gotten clapped before on my Bank of America plays, so I'm going to be playing this somewhat small. I may be looking to do a strangle, meaning I don't anticipate the or rather I may anticipate doing an iron condor, which means I don't anticipate that the stock is going to move a lot. However, we're going to get a little bit closer. I think that the current price is still going to be representative of the stimulus talks, but I may do a put going into the weekend right before earnings. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving parts. I'm looking forward to it. Again, I like Bank of America long, and I think there may be an opportunity here shortly. So if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.